Hello everyone, it's Rachel, a radical soul entangled. So I am doing another energy update. It's close to Valentine's Day um, and it feels like that influenced this. This wasn't my intention to make it necessarily a love reading and actually there's a lot of not so much love but definitely a big focus on the um, material. Like if you see here, let me zoom in a tiny bit. We've got one, two, three pentacle cards. And we have one, two, three nines. And we have, so we have the nine of pentacles and we have the nine of cups in the reverse. And we have the nine of wands upright. All right, two cups cards. Um, so yeah, there's definitely like a dominant energy here. A, definitely a preoccupation with your material resources. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Oops, nope, back in. Nope, a little bit out there. <laughs> um, so definitely a preoccupation with your material resources, your health, your wealth, uh, career, education, things like that. Uh, your home. And so we have in your mind, in your in your headspace, we have uh, the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. And gosh, I feel like this card keeps coming up for us, right? Nine of Pentacles, sometimes upright, sometimes reverse. Um, nines are all about attainment overall. Um, so it has to do with, you know, in this case, Pentacles means you are arriving. It's kind of like I said before, the Harvest card. I like to think of it like, like September is the ninth month, and, uh, and that's usually like when crops are get are just about ready to be harvested, or some crops are being harvested. So that's kind of what that means to me. And usually, so also a single and kind of fabulous energy, like the energy you would want to be in if you really wanted to go for like a more serious relationship where you feel financially and uh, materially stable so you're not looking for somebody to help support you but we have the nine in reverse here so that means maybe you do feel like you have to be supported right now maybe you're looking for more support because you're not feeling very confident in your abilities or maybe you're pushing to attain a certain thing and you're feeling kind of frustrated like it hasn't fully manifested yet it hasn't fully happened yet uh, and you feel kind of close, like you're close to the last steps to get there, but it hasn't happened and you're starting to feel kind of frustrated, maybe even a little discouraged by it. And with this nine of cup, or pentacles card, excuse me, I think it's really interesting. We have like a lot of reds, oranges, and yellows. And again, to me, this represents the, the three lower chakras the root, the, sac um, the sacral, and the solar plexus. And so the very bodily energies, again, because this is, um, the suit is preoccupied with material. So of course it makes sense that it has a lot of bodily energy here, but it also has feathers. And uh, feathers are considered part of the air element. Um, so swords, you know, which is swords, which is thought, and what I take that to mean, though, so it's kind of curious that there are these feathers here, and I take those feathers to mean that, to remind us that in order to be successful materially, our thoughts have to align with that. If we're not thinking we can be successful, we're not going to be successful. If we're, it's okay to have like a little bit of doubt, you know, that's normal, that's natural, but if you're always kind of naysaying your own goals, well, then that's why you feel stuck and you're never really going to attain your goals because you're even going to start to sabotage yourself, work against yourself because you're more aligned with the thinking that it's not going to work out. And you're kind of, if you're attached to those kind of thoughts, you're kind of, part of you is going to make it so. Does that make sense? So, you're maybe doubting your abilities to, you know, manifest these goals on your own. And you're feeling like, you know, I can't get there on my own. So you're channeling this, um, 
this daughter of pentacles energy which is very similar to this is they call daughters it's usually called pages in most other decks uh and so pen page in this case daughter's energy it is a youthful curious wanting to learn new things maybe this is to me this is meaning coupled with this card uh, the desire to level up and to kind of go back on thinking that you know what you need to know. You're like, well, maybe to get, maybe I just need to get to the next level to reach this level of attainment that I've been struggling for and struggling for. And I've been doing everything I know to do, but there's a lot more that I don't know. So maybe I need to look into that more. Maybe I need to look towards more mentorship. Uh, maybe I need to take a class or just you know, find some videos on the topic. Um, maybe I need to go within and look and see what kind of blocks I might have. Because uh, again, the, your thoughts affect your reality. And uh, so you have to be kind of secure in your thinking. You know, it forms this nice like rhombus. You know, we have four corners. Fours are stability. And so this forms this very stable structure with feathers, with air, with thoughts. So you have to be very consistent in your thoughts if you want to reach your goals successfully. Otherwise, you're just working against your own self. And so this daughter's energy is to remind you of that. And we have the rainbow again. So you have to kind of be in a state of alignment. You have to be in this state of open curiosity. Not so much what, what am I doing wrong? Why do I keep screwing up? Get rid of that kind of thinking. You want to think... What more do I need to learn? How can I do this better? How can I be more effective? What's the next level up from here? And in your heart, again, another kind of frustrated attainment energy. Uh, we have the Nine of Cups, which is usually also called the Wish card. Like every you know, desire feels like it's been granted or is about to be granted in this case. You know, uh, it usually means kind of like can even mean like a marriage card or your relationship leveling up you know, in a way that you've been like dreaming of. I mean, it could even just mean like your partner finally agrees to go to counseling or the changes that you've made in yourself. You're starting to see that reflected in your partner and you're starting to feel a lot more harmonious uh, energy in the relationship. But this looks like it's been feeling kind of thwarted again. And because it's in the reverse and we have the um and so we have the ace of pentacles but also in the reverse and so aces are new new energies again and pentacles again material things so you're kind of maybe still in this planning stage and so you don't feel like you're feeling doubtful that your this direction is going to get your you to your heart's desire. You you're like I know I should be this is probably I feel like this is a lot of should energy in this reading. I should I should be getting you know to my goals by now, but I'm not. I should be happy by now, but I'm not. I should be working on these new thoughts. You know, I should be working on these new goals that I have, but I'm kind of not. And in your environment, we have this uh, Four of Cups energy, but also in the reverse. Four of Cups is, you know, when you're so preoccupied with the, um, you know, with your circumstances. Usually you're so preoccupied with, like, the circumstances, how they seem to be in reality that uh, you can't see like a new opportunity coming in. You can't see a blessing that's about to happen. You know, you're just kind of blind to it. Um, but in this one, so they usually show three car, three cups that somebody's intently staring at. And meanwhile, like somebody's trying to pu push in like a new cup, like, here you go, here you go. But they're so focused on those three cups. They can't see new opportunities as they're about to come in. Well, this one has, instead, has a rat, and it looks like it's covering the cups, meaning that, to me, that that's 
there's not a, a firm sense of like replenishment. You're feeling kind of easily depleted, you know, and in the reverse, cups are pouring out and the rat's kind of blocking it from being filled again. And uh, there's also a lot of moon energy, but this moon is dark. Oh, there's like, there's three moons. Hey, it's like threes and nines all up in this reading, right? Um, and three nines are three squared, you know, three times three. Man, okay. Try not to get too caught up in the numerology of it. I'm not not super proficient at numerology, but um, but this moon is dark. You know, see, this moon is light. This moon is like glowing yellow, but this moon is dark. So it means your intuition is maybe clouded by illusion. So you're because again, you're you're not seeing these opportunities. You're not seeing an even bigger picture. You're, you're overly focused on your problems, especially in, in a relationship, especially in like romance, but it could be any kind of romance re relationship. And that's probably really intensified right about now because it's like the day before Valentine's Day. So you're seeing a lot of, you know, propaganda basically at the stores. You're seeing the, all the heart balloons and all the Valentines and all the candies and all the fancy things that you need to buy in order to prove to somebody that you love them. And while those things are nice, and it's nice to get people those gifts like that, it also does put a lot of pressure on us. And you're starting to feel that. And you're starting to feel guarded. Nine of Wands, to me, is mostly a very guarded kind of energy. It's kind of like... I uh, don't know what that was, but okay. <laughs> oh, I think I know what it was. Not a big deal. If you heard that, something fell. Not a big deal. Anyway. <laughs> um, but nines are very defensive, or nine of wands in particular is a very defensive energy. It's either like, I've worked really hard to meet this goal, because it's a nine, and I need to protect it and defend it and stand by it. But with that defensive energy, it can easily become over-attachment to that goal to the point where it starts to drain you, you know, it was supposed to be satisfying and replenish you, but instead it's got you kind of bogged down. And so you're feeling kind of guarded, you're feeling kind of defensive, possibly because of all this pressure in society right now about relationships. And if you're in a relationship, maybe you feel this need to perform a specific kind of act you know or meet these certain expectations and so that feels very like demoralizing you know and maybe you're or maybe if you're not especially if you are single maybe you're just feeling disillusioned by the whole thing and in a way you're not wrong you know it doesn't mean you have to give up on love but definitely how love has been marketed to us for decades you know if not centuries is something we definitely need to outgrow as a society and so you're definitely not wrong if that is making you feel disillusioned but you're having your guard up and I feel like this guarded energy of the nine of wands is kind of feeding into all this and so again I'm getting a very strong feeling of uh shooting yourself to death <laughs> it's something I learned in uh uh in uh therapy once you know if you the word should has so much weight to it that really drags you down. Um, and we should really work to limit that word in our vocabulary and in our thinking, especially for ourselves, because it's so works again, it ends up working against you because it just ends up making you feel guilty, you know, like you've betrayed yourself and or others. Because you're not living up to this, these expectations, these potentials that you believe you have, you know, but you're not fulfilling that. And so you're feeling bad about that. So if you can actually do your best to limit the word should from your self-talk, especially, that actually does wonders for you. And by that, I don't just mean stop saying the word, but start to reassure yourself. Anytime you say, oh, I should be working harder on the, you know, I've done a lot of work on that. I have been doing a lot of work on that. And maybe right now I'm, re I'm starting to feel bad and that never helps. When I talk to myself this way, that never really motivates me. 
that ends up making me feel worse. And I would like to not think this way anymore. I would like to think about all the accomplishments I have done. I would like to think about all the little ways that I have improved over the last few days or whatever, months or weeks or years, or even just, I would like to focus on how I've been consistent in re meeting other goals, even small goals, even just getting up on time, even just getting to work on time. Remind yourself of every little way that you've been consistent, every little way that you've been dependable, every little way that you've been successful. And counter, so anytime you think the word, I should be doing this, reassure yourself of all those little goals. And they start to build up, you know, so you're not so focused on your negative energy. And again, really focus on channeling this Daughter of Pentacles energy, this going back, not back to the drawing board. You're not starting over again. This is more of a leveling up, but going in it, like admitting to yourself, there's a lot I still don't know. There's a lot I still don't understand. And so I need to go and find the resources to give me the knowledge I need for that. You know, because you're kind of stymieing your own goals here. So, that, you know, this Ace of Pentacles is uh, a new energy for your material conditions. You know, maybe you're thinking about how you could go to business for yourself. You know, or maybe uh, how you could start a new hobby or level up in your hobby. But you're so preoccupied that you're not meeting these goals. You're so focused on, I haven't met this goal and I haven't met this goal and I'm not feeling good and I don't have enough that you can't get this thought off the ground, really. So again, it kind of goes back to that should energy. And yeah, so that's kind of what I'm getting for this. Is that in order to get back to, in order to, I like to flip these cards. I like to make that my thing. <laughs> so in order to get these cards in the upright, it doesn't really matter if this one's in the upright, kind of meaning doesn't really change much. It's just to remind you, hey, take a wider perspective, take a wider view of things because you're missing out on and don't get in your own way. This rat is represents getting in your own way. And it's funny that it's a rat because it reminds me of when I was a kid and we went to the Chinese restaurant and uh, I, I practically memorized, you know, that menu with for my family members, what years they were born. And my one sister is Year of the Rat. And the line that stands out most for me, it, which seemed perfectly accurate for her, was seldom makes lasting friendships. <laughs> and yet everybody wants to be your friend, uh, which I always thought was interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, this rat is kind of blocking its own fulfilling of the cups and then wondering, why are these cups empty? You know, because not connect. So again, kind of like getting a, a reminding you to take a wider perspective, get out of your own way, you know, get out of your own head uh, and think of these goals, but in a more general sense and not and try to get away from the dissatisfied energy of I'm not there yet because I'm not like this or I'm like I have these bad habits. That's getting in your own way. That's blocking the filling of your own cups. Instead, you think about, yeah, it'll feel really good when I get there. And I'm getting closer to that every day. I'm doing little things every day to get me closer to this material goal. And you keep it general at first. So that way you're not so overwhelmed by going, well, how am I going to get from here to there? Just kind of appreciate where you're at now. And then feed yourself all these reassurances of how you've succeeded so thus far. And every time you've had a setback, how you that either reminded you that you're not on the right path to begin with and you need to start a new path, or it was an obstacle that you were able to overcome and move forward. And that will definitely get you closer to this material goal. Because again, your thoughts have to align with success. Otherwise, you're just defeating yourself. Otherwise, you're working against yourself. And that's what keeps you stuck. That's what keeps you never work, uh, getting forward. And don't be so focused on 
well, when this happens, then I'll be happy. Focus on being happy now. Now we'll get this Nine of Cups right for you. Focus on little things that have delighted you throughout the day. Focus on every little positive thing and feed it and feed it and feed it. <laughs> feed, it thinking, feed it like a goose. <laughs> Even if you got jam acorns down its throat. I mean, sorry to, it's a cruel image, but sometimes it's meant to be more comical. <laughs> um, it's, oh. Uh, I'm weird sometimes, but yeah, it's just, sometimes you almost have to force it. Like anytime you start to go, yeah, but I'm, I'm not happy now. No, no. Because remember we saw a puppy today and it was so freaking cute. Remember that? That was nice. Remember how we got ourselves some ice cream and how good that ice cream tasted? That was really nice. Remember how we hit all the green lights and traffic today? That was awesome. That was wonderful. So we can be, we have plenty of things to be happy about now. We don't have to Delay our happiness to the future. So again, sometimes you have to kind of force feed your ego positivity <laughs> to, um, you know, to get to this goal. Remind yourself to be happy now. Don't link your happiness to your goals because it'll never come. Don't link your happiness to the future because it'll never come. Don't link it to, well, when I have my degree then I can take a break and then I can be happy. Well, when I get that job, now that I have my degree, now that when I get that job, then I can relax and then I can be happy. Well, when I get, I start at the lower level. So when I get that promotion and then I can relax, then I can be, you're constantly moving the goalpost away. You're constantly postponing your happiness to the future. And therefore that habit means it will never come because you're in the habit of thinking happiness is in the future. Happiness is not here and now. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Yeah, that just really hit me. You're in this habit of thinking that happiness can't occur now until this thing happens, but you've made it now a habit of a pattern of thinking. Again, remember, your thoughts have to align with your goals, but not to the point where your emotional state has to rely on meeting those goals. Your emotions are purely created by your thoughts and so whatever your thoughts are it doesn't matter what's going on in the physical really it it, it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> you know but one person can see something and go oh my god that's horrible another person can say oh wow that's great you know that's a new opportunity wow or somebody's like oh my god this is terrible this you know my whole future is falling apart and the person's like well there's a new opportunity for growth there's a whole new field of things I could do so again it's so it really is about mindset and so you can feed yourself happy thoughts and you will be happier you will <laughs> it's just that's what I've learned and that's why I'm being so insistent upon it so and don't be so defensive of what you have attained that you're not willing to try new things you know, don't be so attached to your accomplishments and achievements that you've reached so far. Be proud of them, sure, but don't cling to them to the point where you're afraid of going after new ideas, you know, because you feel stymied. Again, this can make you end up feeling stuck and then make you sad. And that's why these were in the reverse. Okay, Does that makes sense. I hope so. <laughs> anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it's been helpful to you. Thank you so much for listening. I do personal readings, recorded readings. I have my price sheet and everything in the um, description below. And I also have, um, uh, I'm on Facebook. So please follow me on Facebook. My page is A Radical Soul Entangled. It's also the name of my Instagram where I post uh, daily, uh, usually just a single oracle card reading, but other things too. And so... I would appreciate any likes, follows, subscriptions, shares, anything helps. And I'm so grateful that for that. I'm grateful for your attention. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.